Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new standards of excellence. Yes. Say yes to engage in reportage with a difference. Yes. Introducing Yes International Magazine. The time to say yes to your dreams and aspirations is here. My guest this evening is uh, Mr. Shegu Arinze. Mr. Shegu Arinze is the star actor, singer, voiceover expert, etc., etc. Mr. Arinze is the former president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, the multilinguist who speaks uh, Nigeria's uh, three major languages effortlessly. And that's talking about Igbo, Hausa, and Yoruba recently got elected as the president of the voice over association tonight we're going to be looking at that as well as uh, other issues yes somebody in zako says he's superstar not just a star i i agree with you i agree with you he is a superstar one of our biggest as a matter of fact yes so tonight we'll be looking at that as well as uh, his uh, how his romance with uh, showbiz started once again, you all are welcome. I am imploring everybody to sit back, relax, and enjoy this uh, session. Now, I need you also to follow us on our social media handles. Um, our YouTube channel is the Yes NG TV. The Yes NG TV is T H E Y E S N G TV. So try and uh, follow us, especially if you would like to watch all our previous uh, interviews. Once again, thank you very much and welcome to this Instagram live session. Mr. I call him Black Arrow. That is what I normally call you. I just say Black Arrow. Black Arrow, so nice to have you join us. Thank you so much, Azul. All right. So we can start, right? Yes, we can. All right. Now, my first question will be, what got you interested in acting? Ah. <sighs> uh I've been asked this question over and over and over again. What, how did I get into entertainment? Well, I, I was in secondary school at Victory College of Commerce, ADD, somewhere on the outskirts of Para State, then. Um, not too far from Okene and uh, Egbe mm. and Oro. Okay. And during the holidays, I had this friend, Ayo Oro, well, he's late now, um, who, who saw me one day at NTA Lauren because I used to go to NTA Lauren to try and... Um, read poems or mime and all that. And he said, I, I like your voice and I like your personality. I think you'll make a great actor. And so we started something called the Palm Players then. And we did uh, our first play in Illinois then was with, uh, the, was with um, Ken Saruwa's play, uh, mm -hmm. Transistor Radio. Mm -hmm. I remember myself and uh, Ayo and one other guy called Larry did the uh, Transistor Radio. Um, it was a successful disaster because we didn't really come to this. <laughs> it was <laughs> it a comes successful to, disaster. It comes to this. Yeah, then after that, I had a foray into, into more of the NTA stuff in, in Lorry. I remember Joe Olupidi. Um, the wife was also working with NTA. He was also an NTA. And then, of course, there was a, there was a Abdul Durodola who was producing Youth Sinners at that time. And um, uh, late Yinka Dokwemu, who was presenting them. And then, of course... I uh, had friends like Sim Ayorowale and uh, Randy Ojuolakwe, who was with the Kwara State Art Council. So that's how it all just started. I was still in secondary school, and before you knew it, I was miming, I was acting, I was doing all that. And then, of course, when I finished my secondary school, my dad had to move back to Lagos. And so that was where my big sojourn into, my big foray into entertainment really started because I had to join an answer playhouse while waiting to get into ife to go read the uh, dramatic parts and that's how my, my, my journey started um 
But I was tenacious about it. Though my dad wanted me, my little dad wanted me to be a lawyer, and I said, no, 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 I, I don't want to be a lawyer. <laughs> that entertainment was, was, entertainment was it for me, and I, I, I told my father my forte. We kept on going back and forth on it, and not only one night, I had sung on, on youth scene, and they were using me to do a trailer, what you call promo. Now, and they were showing me singing, and he woke me up and said, hey, hey, hey come and see yourself. And, I have to say, they said, okay, that's not a bad idea, but you must go to school. I said, of course, I'll go to school. And um, along the line, still, we're still going back and forth on it. Not until I had the big break. After I went to Ife and came back, and then I was with Ananta players, and then I had the big break, and the rest is history. I remember in the Playhouse, <coughs> with me, uh, we had the likes of Funcho Alabi, uh, the late Funcho Alabi, we had um, uh, Archibald uh, Tickerens, uh, Basi Efiang was our director. Michael Diachi was also there. He's doing his past on. Um, RMD <laughs> was in Anansa Playhouse. So quite a number of big names that you see today were all, all part of Anansa Playhouse. Charles Opong and the rest of them. Um, well, here we are now. Interesting. Here we are. Interesting. Uh, yeah, rest of history. Interesting. Now, what would you say has kept you going? I would say the challenges of the business and the ability to recognize when you're falling. You see, Entertainment, the, the road to stardom is also like, like an expressway. Um, sometimes, you know, when you drive, sometimes it's smooth. That's when you have it all going for yourself. Then you have the patches on the road. You now start finding ways to avoid those patches. That's when it becomes very rough in the industry. You start, that means you're looking for ways to get yourself uh, out of, of those patches. And sometimes it becomes very muddy and you get stuck. That's when you begin to need somebody who's going to push you when you get stuck. And then you come out of it and then you go again, you see the road becomes like a valley. That's when you are the lowest ebb and you need somebody to push you. And so when you are now ascending that valley, you need friends to help you. Because if you go at too much speed, the chances are that you might slide back. So you've got to do it with a lot of sense and a lot of um, uh, what I call technicality and, and all that. You, the whole idea is that you, you must be humble in, in this business. You really need to be humble because mm. I always tell people to that, listen, on the tree branch, birds, all the birds are, are laced on, on the tree branches. And at, at the point in time, one of the birds is so high on top and every other one on the lower cardi of the, that tree of the branch. And everybody's waiting for the opportunity. Once that big bird, once the one of the birds flies out, Another bird takes its place. And chances are when that bird comes back, when the bird comes back, true. When the bird returns, it might not find that space, that space again. Somebody has taken that space. So he goes down to the lower cardia and tries to find, waiting patiently for that other bird to go off. Mm -hmm. And if he does come back and still stands on, 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 on the same level as the bird that has taken his place, he might just find himself on the precipice. So he has to be very careful because any wind, it could fall off. So in everything we do, we must be very, very humble. Everything is God-given. I've always said that. Even to the, when I mentor young actors and singers and all, listen, you've got to be humble because everything is God-given. I've got this, I've got that. At the end of the day, as well, the truth of the matter is we're all going six feet down the ground. Interesting. So you, your staying power must be humility. And the, uh, I'm also a very hungry person. I, I, I never rest on my own. I always look for new challenges. And when I find new challenges, I just, I just go. And then sometimes... The ability to stop, take stock of everything that you've done, and then have an overview of where you are. Mm. And there was a time I stopped acting for a while because I needed to have an overview of myself. And then I came back again after, after, after some years because I was almost being stereotyped. And that was really getting me very upset. Mm. That was becoming very... I'm, I'm an actor. Yeah, granted, there are certain roles I might not be able to play, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't give my, my best shot at it. And so... I, I had to branch out, I had to delve out into hosting shows, into so many other things in uh, that are uh, entertainment related. Interesting. Now, who is a good actor and what makes a good actor? <sighs> Azu, there's a, saying, there's a saying that you're as good as your last movie. Mm. You're as good as so you can't really say this person is a fantastic actor, it's a good actor. We're all work in progress, including me. Mm. We're all work in progress. There are certain roles that get, you get to find yourself in. And once you get into that role, um, if you're not able to, to play it, uh, you get into trouble. And sometimes it's working with the right directors. Most directors these days are big. 
laid back. They're armchair directors who believe that because they think they made a name, so you just do it. I've been on the set that the, the, your presence alone intimidates the, the director and says, oh, it's you now. But, I, but I, I say to you, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm a tool in your hands. So yeah, yeah. tell me what you want, how you want it, and I'll do it. It's like lame bricks. Like, it's, you don't say because there's cement and there's block and the brick layer is there, okay, it's your, you must. A mason must always do things precisely, how it lays the blocks and let the blocks and their measurements and all that, just like the architect. So oh, saying what, what makes a good actor is a relative, is a very relative question. It's, mm. it's work in progress. You must continue to work. You might, it's like playing football. Some days you're at the top of your game, you score five, six goals in a, or 20 goals in a season. Sometimes in a match, you not even see half a goal. We've seen it happen to the likes of Messi, Ronaldo, Maradona, the late Maradona, and the rest of them. So uh, even David Beckham. So you must continue to talk at it. You must continue to work at it. Ask questions when in doubt. Even when not in doubt, still ask questions so that you, you get, it, get it right. And be open to learn. Mm. It's a learning process every day. There are certain things you learn as an actor. Acting keeps evolving from the days of Stanley's last key, uh, Stella Art, um, Adeline, a lot of them. All the schools of thought of acting, it, it, it just keeps evolving on mm. and on and on and on. Sandy Zlaski mm. started the internalization thing, which we started calling character acting and all that. And so you, you after a while, a lot of other tutors, a lot of acting teachers also started breaking out from that and started doing other, other things as well. And we're building on what Stanislavski had, had, had started. And today, there's so many techniques to act in, so many techniques. But you must find what suits you and what makes what's comfortable, what you're comfortable with. And if you find that, use it. Some actors have their own tricks, they have their magic at how they do it. I remember when I was in school, my, my, my teacher, who's a professional, Chuck Mike, in acting class, he would say, hey, drop your bag of tricks. And over time, I did drop my bag of tricks because he found that uh, there were some bags of tricks that I had. He had to smoothing out the rough urges in me. And over time, to have expressed that as you go along, every production comes with its own challenge and its own, own um, peculiarities. So that's, that's it. So I wouldn't want to say what makes a good actor. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> how do you work? Interesting. Now, you're one of the most uh, multi-talented souls that I know. I mean, you act, you <laughs> sing, you do voiceover, Etc. Etc. How do you juggle all these uh, balls? That's that's where the striking the balance comes. That's where you need to find a place to strike the balance. And and once you can strike the balance, there every other thing falls into place. So once you can strike the balance, it works. Um, I've been able to juggle all that, strike the balance. Say, these are my times. This is when I want to work. This is when I don't want to work. This is what I want to do. Um, I've been able to say to myself, I don't want, to, I don't want this, this script. I, I don't think I want to do this production. I don't think I want to do this. So it's been able to strike a balance for yourself. You, you mustn't take on everything. You just mustn't take on everything because that becomes too much for you. And once you do that, you crash. So it's striking a balance and working at it. That's, that's, that's how I've been able to, to do that. But voiceover is one thing that's after, after my heart. There was a time I wasn't acting. It was all voiceover. I was speaking my bills. At the point in time, and I really enjoy doing a lot of voiceovers. I, I'd like to give credit to Sonny Rabo because he was one of those who started it in the in the late eighties with me. Osaze Yabu Mani Onumono, Bisio Lati Lado, people who people Tunde Ajija Dudu Kings Lugo. Those are people who nudged me on into doing voiceovers. And today I look at back and I just say, okay, I've also been able to impact on a lot of my colleagues as well. Like, for instance, Isaac Moses. I heard his voice first time. He was my manager when I was a singer. And I said, listen, you can do voiceovers. And before you knew that, Isaac Moses today is one of the best voiceover <laughs> talents you can think about. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Now, you, you rose to become the president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria. What would you describe as your greatest achievement in office? Well, uh, I was... First of all, so I came in in a tumultuous time. It was so much trouble when I came in. We came in a, when the waters were very troubled and um, we had to steady the ship. I, I know that uh, as I, when I came in, there was so much big batting, fighting, and all that that was going on and on and on and on and on. But I was able to stabilize the ship. Uh, and I, 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 I had a good team, Emeka Rollers, Abubakar Yakub. We had a philosophy and a direction that, listen, 
the whole idea is to study the ship and work with the with the board of trustees and i'm glad that we're able to do that and apart from that um my coming into actors good of nigeria also give a lot of uh well, I say value to, to, to actors give because prior to that time it was just on the surface. But when I got into the fray, uh, the controversy in a way rubbed off on all of us. Everybody <laughs> started to know who are the actors guild. Why are you guys fighting? Why are you guys doing all this? But here we are today. Actors guild is at peace with itself and uh, we're moving on. And one of the things that I like was that we're able to twine. We, we were able to start the twining process. Yeah, even though I'm hoping that the Mecca Rollers will be able to complete it with the Screen Actors Guild of. Uh, in, in, in Hollywood and of course with the Intrapan, there are two big big groups that were merging, merging in America. It's like saying um, you have the Yoruba, the, what we call it now, and the English and they're the merging. You were able to do that. Um, so we started that process. We also tried to also twine with the British equity. We also were with the health insurance uh, thing. So uh, I'm very proud of the legacy that, that we left behind, and I'm sure that the Mekarolas is, is doing great so far, so good with, with what he, Interesting. where we, we left up. Interesting. Now, you, you, you just got elected, you know, as the president of the Voice of Artists. Uh, the of Voice of Artists yes. for Nigeria. Yes. So how, how, that's does, big, that's a, how does this that's make, big challenge. How, how does this make you feel, and what plans have you got for the association? A lot of plans. I have four years to work. Um, we just got inaugurated and a lot on ground to be done. We yeah, listen, we have to repackage Avoir. We have to repackage the Association of Voice of Artists and take it to the top. Um, a lot of voice over talents. We also need to break out, like discovering a lot of young talents. A lot of young talents want to see me, ah, I want to do voice over. So you, we need to bring a lot of these young people in and also put them in leadership positions. We're going to be having a lot of uh, workshops. There are a lot of child voiceover talents that are there that we've not been able to explore and exploit and, and train. We need to train them because sometimes you find that these youngsters are, are timid when it comes to reading. So we need to give, help them achieve, get to the top. There are a lot of OAPs that we need to teach how the broadcast ethics on air, um, pronunciations on air, how you say some things. A lot of them have a lot of hitch factor. It's, it's a whole gamut, it's a whole lot of work that we have. I'm meeting with my school. The first meeting is this week and um, after that, we'll drop uh, the li lineup of what we want to do within, in the next uh, in the next two years, and then we'll see how that goes in the next two years before before our tenure get, comes to an end. But it's a whole lot of work. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to working with a lot of young uh, um, voiceover talents all over Nigeria, um, voice actors. Because you see, in everything you do, your voice is very important. Mm -hmm. It's important. You want to talk, you want to sell omo its voice you want to announce at the airport its voice you use at the train station its voice you use you want to tell people to come for meetings it's voice over so a lot so voice is very important if without a voice you're nothing without mm -hmm. so we should thank god for the grace and the ability for us to have the voice and be able to speak so it's there's so much power in the voice interesting now this is the second time you know that you're being uh, called upon or elected to lead a major association, you know, in the industry. What do you think, uh, yes. why do you think you're always uh, being called upon? Why do you think <laughs> you get uh, elected as president? Azu, mm. Azu, Bro. it's grace. It's grace. Mm. It's great. Serious grace, and I thank God for grace. Um, mm. Who is this thing that I sent Shiva down his spine? I beg, I don't send Shiva down anybody's spine. <laughs> Send Shiva down my spine. Please, I don't send Shiva down anybody's spine. The only thing that I try to do my work like when I open my eyes to go. So, you know, I'm, I'm a gentle bed, though. I'm a gentle bed. I think I'll take <laughs> Right, so I was saying, Grace. Mm. Nothing more. I would, I would, I, I can't even attribute anything to you, to you but grace is God's grace, and um, the ability to also be able to carry people along when we do things, when you work. I think that's most important. The most effective way of working with people is communication, and you don't arrogate the knowledge and 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 wisdom of everything to yourself because you have a team. We have an ESCO working with me, and I've told them, listen, we could have our arguments, we could fight, we could shout, but once we leave that boardroom. We must sort ourselves before we leave the boardroom and move on to the next thing. I don't, I don't like, me for one, I don't like personality clash. I, do, I hate personality clash. I don't want to lord it over you. I'm the president, so it has to be like this. Oh, mm -mm. If you bring an idea and we're running away with it, we'll give you the credit. And that's how it should be. So 
I don't believe in being pig headed, uh, showing that I'm the all knowing master. No, 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 no. Let's carry ourselves all along. We just carry ourselves along. And you see, when you're washing your hand, one hand washes the other and put soap, you wash it, and that's how you clean up the dust. So that's how we're going to do. We're going to be rubbing off of each other, bouncing off each other, and we'll get that. The challenge is not going to be easy. It's going to be rough, murky, but we'll get that. Interesting. God will it. Interesting. Interesting. Now, you've uh, interpreted uh, dozens of roles. Which is the most memorable role that you have played, and why? What? That's the role you called my name now, Black Arrow. <laughs> 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 the name has refused. Did you, for one reason, the name, the name has refused to go. And you, you know the funny thing about you know the funny thing about Silent Night was that when we talk about grace again, that's what we talk about grace. It wasn't. It was. I wasn't the lead in Silent Night. It was Ramsey that was the mm. lead in Silent Night. And so, in the process of shooting. But he's so rest in peace, Chico, Mr. Prolific, that you named him Mr. Prolific. Thank you. <laughs> Thank I didn't you. even come about that name, self. <laughs> we'll talk about that as long as we go. <laughs> Maybe any day you decide to interview me. I'll not tell you how I came about the name. <laughs> okay. So, so, we were somewhere in Okota. We were filming. This was, this was 1996. We're going to do, the, we're, we're going to shoot the firing spots. And I said, hey, listen, Chico, why don't you let Black Arrow stay? And then come back and revenge his, his colleagues. He stopped, <laughs> stared at me, and then pushed me aside. I said, okay, come out, come out, come out. And planted me inside the, inside the crowd and took a scene of where I was peeping and looked, watching, watching the, the execution. And that gave birth to Silent Night 2. We became a monster. Yeah. So Silent Night 2 came and became a monster. And I think also you had, it was a result of holding that baby up with a gun. That was one of the things that actually cost a lot of Ferrari. Yeah. With, with, in fact, the women organization some women or association did not like that at all. I remember. And <laughs> they were screaming and chatting, but all, all that, all that, all that is, is in the trash can of history. <laughs> the bottom line is that we made a movie, Silent Night became big. But I think we also tried to overdo ourselves when so we tried to do Silent Night 3 with that word called the big heavyweight. And it became a successful disaster. <laughs> Interesting. But uh, all, in, all, all in all, Silent Night 1, 2, 3 was okay. <laughs> and I, I have you know that we were in the process of reshooting, of doing a, a remake of Silent Night when you go past yeah. from me. So rest in peace. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm talking with the wife, and we look forward to shooting the return of Black Arrow very, very soon. We're working seriously on the return of Black Arrow. Interesting. Interesting. Now, which is your worst role and why? I will not mention that as well, so that the producer will not come and kill me. <laughs> but, 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 but you know, that's a life, but interestingly, that's the life of an actor. Mm. Uh, there are certain roles that you do and you regret it. I remember, I did, it's not even about the money that you're paid to start with, as it's not about the money. Sometimes you get so well paid, but the picture becomes a tragedy. I, I did a movie that I was well paid, and when I saw the edit, I was praying to God in my heart, Father Lord, may this film not come out, though. May this film not come out. Father, it was bad, but I should have been doing that. But because of my reputation, I was saying, hey, 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 hey please, please, please. Um, I, I think God answered my prayer because still not the movie. <laughs> so, so, so. Interesting. Interesting. No, but I've, 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 had, I've had so many experiences about uh, with, with, with movies, good, the bad, the ugly, and all, what have you. Okay, interesting. Now, to have a taste of success in Nollywood, what must one do? There's no substitute to hard work, Azul. There's mm. no substitute to hard work. I remember when we started with this industry, when we started, we, we started from ground zero. People didn't believe in us. They thought we're street urchins, we're rascals, never do well. A lot of things that just didn't work out well at that point in time. But we kept up with because of the belief that we had. And also, in my music career, when I started out my music career, um, I've never said this, but let me say this to you, Azu. I don't think I've ever mentioned this to you. When I started on my, when I was going to start on my music career, um, you know where Day Star Church is now? Yes, I do. Okay, in Oregon. I do. It was first in Oregon. Yeah. Near that link bridge now. I know. Okay, and they put it That used to be EMI. Hmm. And so I went to Lagos with my parents then, and um, we had this little girl, Yvonne Maha. She had done this song, Don't Treat Me Like a Child. Do you remember that song? Yeah, Yvonne Maha. And so, Yvonne Maha. So, I was now talking with some of my friends, and they now, 
and then you used to read the back of the album and then I saw the name of the producer and where the address of the studio. So I woke up very early in the morning and went out to the studio to try and see the name, this very big name to say, hey, let me see what can happen with me. I had met the late Jack Solo then. Jack Solo said I should go, I didn't have any money. I couldn't even go ask my father. I dare not. I couldn't even dare to ask my father to give me what I wanted to sing. I wanted to give me what I looked like. Man, are you crazy or something? <laughs> so I kept it. Even going for rehearsals then with my mother would take money from her money that my father used to give, give me some money. Go for your rehearsal. Go for your rehearsals and all that. You know, I was in an answer playhouse then. And so I went there and I saw this guy in all his regal, in all his regal nature was wearing a light blue down shaky he was seated with somebody and we we're just talking and so i went to him respectfully and i said good morning sir he looked at me i said i like what you did with yvonne maha sir and I i'm a young aspiring singer i don't know if you can help me sir i i have a voice i think i can sing and he looked at me and he said you just left secondary school i said yes sir I'm waiting to get into a high institution and he said what makes you think the singing is for the likes of you whoops Everything I do about me crashed that day. I cried all the way home. I refused to eat. I didn't even tell my mom or dad anything that happened to me. I just was just, just there. Mm. And then I started pushing. I felt so, so bad. Then fame came. I started writing lyrics for state. Fame started coming. I started writing for Nigerian Music Awards with Tony Okoroji in the 90s. I started doing voiceovers. I started doing acting ripples fortunes i was climbing the ladder but i i would hard work I, because i believe in hard work so anything to get me to the top i was doing it i was working so hard as hmm. so i slept on the floor of the national theater the main bowl of the national theater for days or weeks i won't go home because i had to be at rehearsals because i didn't want to miss rehearsals so by dint of hard work i was just working on and on and on and then i started writing jingles, I started writing copies for others, I started doing voiceovers and all that was growing. And then the EDC asked me to come record with, sign with Premier Music and I signed, boom. And my name was changed there from there, from Shegwa, you know, to Shegwa Arinze. Because they had asked me, what other names do you have? And I said, Arinze is also my name. And Frank is also one of mine. And he, he went, no, no, I can't put uh, uh, Shegwa you know, on the chef. You sound like a Fuji artist or a Juju artist. I said, okay. <laughs> so, so Philip Timmel had taken my picture. We were shot by pictures and all that. Kiss was busy producing the album. And then Amadi Obun Name is so rest in peace for Vanguard, Ladi Ayode, Jandarov. You know them now. I do. Faji, everybody. I do. Faji, I do. I do. Boom, I just saw my picture on the magazines over the weekend. Uh, Premier Music Science on New Artist Shagarins. And I was like, uh, what's that? What's that? <laughs> I ran to Satellite Town for the day. Following Monday, I said, hey, excuse me, what's the way I say? Relax. That's the whole idea. I want to create curiosity that the name will stick. And truly, the name stuck. Mm -hmm. So, as I told you, my trajectory continued on and on and on and on and on and on. Then, boom, Silent Night, Black Arrow, became big. And so I met Dr. OJ, the late Dr. OJ of Irish Medical Foundation. Yes, you know I him. Remember, well. yes. so I think was the Marshall from another. Then he asked, he was opening his house and he asked me to come by his house, come see the at uh, the house warming. And so I, would, uh, I went to the retinue of friends and as I was getting into the venue, I just started hearing my name. Somebody was singing with my name and praising me to high heavens. And I stopped and I saw the person and I looked up to the heavens and I said, God, you're the greatest humorist. This same man who had told me many years back, what makes you think singing is for the likes of you? <laughs> the same man that was my have I ever told you this story? No, before? you have not. I'm hearing it for the first time. You know the person? <laughs> do you know the person? I, I, I think I do. I should. The late son, the late son you Okosu. Wow. <laughs> yes, he was also very close to to uh, Dr. J. Yeah, Dr. J. Wow. But look at how. And so, but, but, the, but the thing was that I, I, after that, I ensured that I was never arrogant or be rude or be anything. Mm. When I greeted him and all that, I'm sure till he died, I never even mentioned it to him. Uh, that, do you remember me? I, I didn't go uh, over it. Uh, and I told myself there and then that I will work for every young actor, singer that I see that I can help push. I will mm. push. Mm. And that's what I'm doing today. Wow. I will continue to train them, I will continue to nurture them, I will continue to mentor them. Mm. Because we didn't have the opportunity. We never had that opportunity. But here, yeah, on the platter of gold, they are having the opportunity. So I just look forward to helping to mentor them and, and you know, let them grow. 
Interesting. Which Interesting. Is, we never had this opportunity that they have now, social media and all that. We were looked upon as vagabonds, rascals, and all that. <laughs> you asked RMB was driving on flat RMB those days was driving on flat Mercedes Benz. We used to push it. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Like cream, cream, cream Benz. <laughs> we all have a story to tell. But That's I'm happy true. that we're where we are today. And like I said, the most important thing in your career is hard work, discipline, mm. and humility. Interesting. Interesting. Everything is not about money. That's true. Everything is not about money. So That's true. That's true. That's true.